Hello grade tens and welcome to the topic vectors and scalars. In this topic we will be working with forces in quite a bit of detail. Let us start the lesson by revising what we know about forces. Let us have a look at some forces in action. From these examples, we can see that a force is either a push or a pull in a specific direction. Have you ever watched a tug-of-war competition where the two teams are pulling a rope from opposite ends, each team trying to pull the other over the centre marker? Which team wins? Well, that is decided by two things, the size of the force exerted by the contestants and the direction in which the forces act. Can you think of other things that we measure where size and direction are important? In this lesson, we will discuss things that scientists measure. We call these measurable things physical quantities. Examples are distance, speed and force. Some of these quantities have size and direction, and some have only size. Have you ever played computer or video games in which you have to shoot balls or other things and hit targets? Let us have a look at a snippet of a game being played now. It is about doggies versus froggies. The dogs are trying to catch the frogs. In this game, the gamer has to exert a force on the catapult. So there are two factors here, the size or magnitude of the force and the direction of the force. He does that by deciding how to release the catapult. But to be successful, he must also aim the dog in the right direction. If the type of physical quantity has only magnitude with the unit, we call it a scalar quantity. For example, if a bee flies a distance of 15 meters, then this is a scalar quantity. It has a size and unit of 15 meters and no direction is attached. However, if we attach a direction to a quantity, then the quantity is a vector. A vector quantity has magnitude with the unit and direction. If the gamer is told to apply a force of 4 newtons to the dog in the game we saw, will that be enough information to get him to hit the target? No, he needs to know the direction too. For example, he could apply a force of 4 newtons at 30 degrees to the horizontal. Then, this measurement has a magnitude and unit as well as direction and is therefore a vector quantity. All physical quantities, whether they are vector or scalar quantities, must have a unit such as newtons or meters. So, to recap these two terms, a scalar quantity has magnitude and a unit. A vector quantity has magnitude, a unit and direction. There are some physical quantities that we measure often. These physical quantities include things such as time, mass, weight, force and charge. Every single one of these physical quantities has a standard international unit or SI unit. For example, the SI unit for force is the Newton and the SI unit for time is seconds. All physical quantities, both vector and scalar quantities, require a unit. Some of these physical quantities need a direction attached to them to be of any use, but some do not need a direction. For example, time is a quantity that does not need a direction. You can say to someone, my mom will fetch me in 30 minutes. That is absolutely understandable and attaching a direction to that would make no sense at all. However, if you give someone directions to your house, they wouldn't get very far if you said to them, go out the door and travel 200 meters. Without a direction to that measurement, they wouldn't know which way to go and probably wouldn't end up at their destination. A physical quantity such as 200 meters has magnitude and a unit, so it is a scalar quantity. The physical quantity that measures how far an object travels is called distance. However, 200 meters north is a quantity with a magnitude, a unit and direction, so it is a vector quantity. 
the physical quantity that measures the straight line between the start and finish of a journey and gives its direction is called displacement. We can give the units of distance and displacement meters. However, displacement must include direction as well. A similar thing can be seen with the quantities speed and velocity. Speed measures how fast an object moves and its SI unit is meters per second. Velocity also measures how fast an object moves and its SI unit is also meters per second. But velocity values must include a direction as well. By now you can see that there are many different vector and scalar quantities. Vector quantities include velocity, displacement, acceleration and force. Some examples of scalar quantities include speed, distance, time, energy and charge. Now let's look at a few examples and decide whether the quantities listed are vector or scalar quantities. The first example. Is the quantity 2 meters a vector or a scalar? This measurement has a magnitude of 2 meters, but there's no direction, so this must be a scalar quantity. Interestingly, distance values, which have no direction attached to them, could measure a distance in a straight line, or a curve, or a path that changes direction. Our second example is 20 newtons east. Is that a vector or a scalar? This is a measurement that has a magnitude of 20 newtons and it also has a direction of east. So this is a vector quantity. For our third example, 4 meters per second. This measurement has a magnitude of 4 meters per second, but no direction is given. So this is a scalar quantity. In fact, it is a measurement of speed. Example 4 is 6 meters per second left. This has a magnitude of 6 meters per second and a direction of left. So it is a vector quantity and it is a measurement of velocity. When we work with a vector quantity, we can represent the vector by a line with an arrowhead on it. The line represents the magnitude of the vector and the arrowhead represents the vector's direction. To represent the size of a vector, we use a scale. For example, when we represent force vectors, we use a scale which tells us how many newtons in reality each centimeter in the diagram stands for. Let us say, for example, that we want to represent a force of 12 newtons. The scale that we use determines how long the line is drawn. We could use a scale of one centimeter to represent one newton. If we did, then the 12 newton force would be represented by a line that is 12 centimeters long. If we chose a scale of 1 centimeter to represent 2 newtons, then the 12 newton force would be represented by a line that is 6 centimeters long. And if we chose a scale of 1 centimeter to represent 4 newtons, then the 12 newton force would be represented by a line that is 3 centimeters long. All three of these representations are correct. You can see though that the scale we chose determines how long the lines are. Remember, we also need to represent the direction of the vector. If an object moves in one dimension only, we can use directions such as left and right or east and west. When vectors act in opposite directions, we make one direction positive and the opposite direction negative, like on a number line. As an example, let's choose the right direction as positive and the left direction as negative. For example, if a force of 5 newtons acts to the right on this dog from our game, we say that the force acts in a positive direction and is therefore positive 5 newtons. If a force of 5 newtons to the left acts on the dog, we say that this force acts in a negative direction and is therefore negative 5 newtons. So today, we have learned about the difference between vector and scalar quantities. We have also learned about how to represent the magnitude and direction of vector quantities graphically. You can visit our website to revise or to learn more about this topic and others. Until later, Goodbye.